Salut, Pascal Muscato here. Welcome back into another video. In today's video, we are looking at damping. We want to damp position and we want to damp rotation. Uh, you'll see damping position is pretty straightforward and damping rotation is a little bit harder. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Before we start this tutorial, I want to show you what I did to prepare the scene. I first created four spheres that are parented to each other like this. And all, I also created a relation constraint that is empty right now. Let's start by creating our custom property that will be used in the relation constraint to set up the, the damping. Click on the object on the properties tab editor. Under the custom properties tab, you, I want to add number to my sphere one. I'll add three of them and they will be renamed to Damping Sphere 2, 3, and 4. So let's close this. In the Properties window, let's go down and click on the little A button right here to make them accessible to the relation constraint. Now let's take our four sphere, press Alt, and drop it into my relation constraint as a sender. And let's take the three sphere that I want damping to be applied on, press out and drop them as a receiver. So the reason I did that is I want sphere one to provide the numbers of the custom property we just created. And I want to affect the translation of every other sphere and put it back inside the translation of that same sphere. So now let's go into the relation constraint and open the tab other. And let's add the damping 3D node. I want three of them. So I copy paste it. And then I'm going to start with sphere underscore two. Take that custom property and put it into the damping factor. I'll do the same for three and four. Now I want sphere two translation to be the vector that I'll be damping. And I'm going to put it back into translation right here. I'm going to do that for three and four. Now let's go in the sphere one into the custom properties and let's just put everything to 100. So let's see the result. So as you see right now, everything is damping at the same value, but I can change that and put 50, 100 and 200 right here. And you'll see that the result is a little bit different. Okay, so now that we have damped the position of the objects, let's go a little bit deeper and look at the rotation. So let's try to damp the rotation. The thing is that because rotation works um, in a different way, you know, when, for example, your object is reaching minus 180, it goes to positive 180. And that's the problem with, the, with this damping node because it's a linear damping. So we have to use another node, but you will see that the result is very different and it's a little bit harder to control. I'll start by creating again some custom properties, but I'm gonna use the same custom properties for all of the sphere. It's up to you to create more if you want to, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple. So I'll go to editor, custom property, number, and I'll be adding three number again, and I'm going to rename those. So I have damping, acceleration, and max speed. We also want to activate those custom properties as you see they appear now into the relation constraint. And to keep it simple, I also gonna add a new relation constraint. That I will rename 
damping rotation. I'm going to do pretty much the same as earlier. So I'm going to add all of them, the four sphere as senders and add the three last as receivers. Let's go and add the damp rotation node. It's under rotation, damp rotation. Again, I want three. I can already connect those to rotation input. Sphere to rotation, the little R vector right down here. Rotation, rotation, all right. And now let's connect uh, our three custom properties we created earlier to those um, property right here. So damping, acceleration, and max speed. Let's do that for all of them. So let's give this a try. But first, we have to deactivate position damping. Uh, so that we see more clearly what happened with rotation damping. Then we want to go into sphere one properties and down to custom properties. You want to put those number 100, 500 and a thousand uh, simply because those are a pretty good start and uh, start with those number and find out the numbers you need. You might need to animate them as you go because it can change depending on the situation. All right, so let's have a look. So you're probably noticing there's a spring effect on this uh, damping. Uh, this happened with the rotation damping. It also can happen with position damping. If you go into vector, you got the damp position and it's exactly the same type of damping as the rotation. You can also use this one for the damping position. I've used this one because it's very easy and very straightforward. The result looks good. Uh, but if you want the spring effect, use damp position and get the same input as we see in the, as we have seen in the rotation damping. All right. Let's activate back the position damping and have a look at everything bounds together. So that's it for today's video. I hope you've learned something. Um, be sure to leave a thumbs up if you like the content of uh, this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of it. And I'll see you in the next one. À la prochaine!